Hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. For today's video, I'm proud to present an up close and personal in-depth look with the 2015 Subaru Outback. This particular one being a 2.5i Premium. Big thanks to Subaru for providing us this example for a whole week of testing. As always guys, this is going to be a detailed in-depth review of the Outback. We'll start it up, show the engine, get an exhaust clip of the performance data, take an off thorough road test and show you many of the unique aspects of both the interior as well as exterior. And so, without further ado, let's go ahead and hop on in, start it up, let it run. Our tester comes finished in tungsten metallic and is paired with a warm ivory premium cloth interior with black accents, not to mention three-stage heated front seats. Keyless ignition and push-button start is available on the limited trim. The Outback features electric power assisted rack and pinion steering with a 14 to 1 ratio, 2.82 turns to lock and a 36.1 foot turning diameter. It's righted through a leather wrapped 3 spoke multifunction steering wheel, highlighted by satin silver spokes, split lower spoke and grip bolsters at 10 and 2. We'll talk more about on road behavior and ride quality a little later in the video. Sending power to all four wheels via Subaru's symmetrical all wheel drive system is a linear tronic CVT or continuously variable transmission. Despite any preconceived notions about prior CVTs, the Outback's unit is one of the best I've driven to date. Along with the Nissan Murano I tested a while back, CVTs have come a long way in delivering better performance with enhanced efficiency. While it's not something you want in a performance car, the CVT works like a charm here. It even comes with steering wheel panel shifters, which allow you to shift between six simulated gears and preset ratios, which are otherwise variable in automatic mode. The ratio spread ranges between 3.581 and 0 0.6. In manual mode, the former would be first gear, while the latter would be sixth gear. Manual mode doesn't add much to performance though. The simulated gear changes are much slower than I'm used to, but it's still fun nonetheless if that's something you're interested in. Definitely glad Subaru added the functionality. Overall final drive is 4.111. In normal low speed driving and acceleration, the CVT keeps the revs down, maximizing fuel economy. Push the car harder and it begins to mimic our traditional automatic. Really, it's quite intriguing. All in all, it offers a lot of flexibility for this application. For any skeptics out there, I encourage you to reserve your judgment until you try it out, as I believe it's actually one of the Outback's strong points. A backup camera is standard while our tester has a leather wrap shift knob. Behind the shifter, there's an electronic parking brake, in addition to hill ascend control and an X mode for the all wheel drive system. X mode optimizes engine output, CVT ratio position, increases all wheel drive engagement, and uses enhanced control logic for the vehicle dynamics control system to reduce individual wheel spin. So let's go and flip on the automatic LED accent and projector headlamps, fog lamps, and the hazards. Both front windows are fully automatic. And we'll go ahead and check out the exterior. The car base crossover is no new concept. Looking at market trends over the years, there have been many new options that have surfaced in a relatively short time. With what seems like a saturated segment, it's almost hard to stand out anymore. 
Some, such as the Volvo V60 Cross Country we recently tested and the Audi All-Road, distinguish themselves from the crowd by offering superior off-road ability with the practicality of a wagon. While both are pretty sweet in their own right, the Subaru Outback has been providing these traits to consumers for over 20 years now. With a starting price of $24,995, it's also set at a far lower price point. Sure, comparing a Subaru to an Audi might not make sense to some, but this year Subaru claims it's created the most luxurious Outback to date. Originally referred to as the world's first sport utility wagon, the Outback has been an outdoor favorite for years, combining high ground clearance, standard all-wheel drive, and an outwardly rugged demeanor. It offers a pretty unique alternative to the mid-sized crossover segment with what I believe is class-leading functionality for the price. Now entering its fifth generation for 2015, the all-new Outback has been refined and updated to create the most advanced offering yet. It's also more efficient, practical, and roomier than ever before. The biggest notable differences include styling and dimensions. The powertrains, which we'll cover later on, carry over for the most part unchanged, just minor tweaks here and there. However, across the board you'll see a significant bump in fuel economy thanks to the linear tronic transmission. The previous 5-speed automatic has been completely dropped, as has the 6-speed manual. Active grille shutters on the 2.5i improve aerodynamics up front, reducing wind resistance or added fuel economy. Compared to its predecessor, wheelbase is lengthened by 0.2 inches, while overall length and width increased by 0.6 and 0.7 inches respectively. These small changes lead to a notable expansion of interior space for passengers and cargo. A number of key areas were addressed to help improve visibility. For starters, the windshield was pulled forward 2 inches at the base, creating a steeper rake, along with higher seating hit points, new front partition windows, and door-mounted side view mirrors. Like before, it rides 8.7 inches above the ground, giving customers the added clearance needed for mild off-road duty. The styling follows similar changes seen in the recently redesigned Legacy, including new sheet metal that yields a bolder look with crisper, sculpted lines that blend a sense of refinement and capability. A new front fascia combines the hexagonal grille and bumper into one smooth piece. A new aluminum hood reduces weight over the front axle, said to improve steering feel. New LED accented front and rear lighting elements add a modern touch. Projector beam halogen headlamps are standard, while HID low beam lights are added on the 3.6R Limited. Like the aforementioned Volvo and Audi, aggressive lower cladding finishes off the distinct off-road inspired look. The standard active torque split all-wheel drive system electronically manages a variable hydraulic transfer clutch to disperse torque between the front and rear wheels. Data taken from acceleration, steering angle, and yaw rate sensors make sure the appropriate proportion is always in play respective to the driving condition. More torque can be summoned by the rear wheels if traction necessitates, while active torque vectoring gives additional assistance in the corners. Our tester features the optional EyeSight driver assist system which combines adaptive cruise control, pre-collision braking, and vehicle lane departure warning. When equipped, EyeSight also adds steering responsive fog lamps that work when the fog lamps are actually turned off. It basically activates the left or right fog lamp independently based on vehicle speed and steering angle, providing enhanced illumination in the direction of the turn. Pre-aim for maximum coverage in corners. A roof-mounted spoiler out back adds a sportier touch, while a set of substantial roof rails open up the possibilities for rooftop storage. The Outback Premium features a set of 17 by 7 inch silver painted 5 twin spoke alloy wheels for reduced unsprung weight and improved curb appeal over the base steel wheel setup. They're wrapped in 22565 Bridgestone all season tires, allowing the Outback to hold a little under 0.8 g of lateral acceleration. Regarding the brakes, all Outbacks receive the same setup, consisting of four wheel internally ventilated discs. Up front, you'll find 12.4 inch rotors with dual piston calipers, while the rear features 11.8 inch rotors and single piston calipers. ABS, electronic brake force distribution, and an electronic hill starter is standard amongst other safety features and an electronic parking brake. Underneath, the Outback benefits from a fully independent suspension composed of McPherson struts in front with lower L arms, coil springs, and a stabilizer bar, not to mention an engine cradle. A double wishbone design supports the rear along with an integrated subframe and stabilizer bar. I'll talk about this throughout the video, but the Outback is a downright comfortable vehicle, especially for use as a people hauler. The ride is soft with a very compliant suspension that soaks up most of the road imperfections. Not much transfers into the cabin, which is great if you're looking for something a bit more relaxed and easy going. Handling is pretty good for what it is, well controlled with minor body roll in the corners. 
Overall length is 189.6 inches with a width of 72.4 inches and a height with the crossbars in place of 66.5 inches. Wheelbase is 108.1 inches. Total curb weight as you see here is around 3,593 pounds. The Outback is available with two different engines, providing standard power as an all-aluminum 2.5 liter horizontally opposed four-cylinder, otherwise known as a boxer engine. The dual overhead cam mill features variable intake valve timing, sequential multi-port fuel injection, and chain-driven camshafts. Compression ratio is rated at 10.3 to 1 with a red line of 6,000 RPM. It develops 175 horsepower at 5,800 RPM and 174 pound-feet of torque at 4,000 RPM. With 0 to 60 times just a hair over 9 seconds, it's not at all built for performance. For that, you need to step up to the 3.6R, but it feels a lot faster than you'd think. I believe it's partly due to the excellent CVT transmission like we talked about earlier and the relatively short final drive, making it rather peppy off the line. The best part about the drive is how smooth it is, something shoppers will likely notice and appreciate about the Outback. The powertrain felt very refined and kept overall noise down for a pretty quiet interior on long trips. You can still hear a muffled boxer burble characteristic to any Subaru, one of my favorite things about these engines. On the other hand, the Outback 3.6R gains a 3.6 liter boxer 6 cylinder that develops 256 horsepower and 247 pound feet of torque. Good for improved acceleration and greater towing capacity, 3,000 pounds versus the 2.5i's 2,700 pound limit. Another big plus with opting for the 2.5 though is fuel economy. While both engines produce respectable numbers and run on 87 octane, EPA estimates for the 2.5 liter range between 25 miles to a gallon in the city and 33 on the highway, averaging around 28 miles to a gallon. That's an improvement over 20, 27, and 22 miles to a gallon respectively with the 3.6. Fuel tank capacity is 18.5 gallons. Inside, the Outback benefits from a well put together and nicely finished environment, thoroughly updated for 2015 with improvements in build quality, technology, and passenger comfort. New soft touch materials in addition to thicker cushioning for the armrest and center console added even more premium elements. All in all, the upper door panels and dash all carry padded surfaces. Newly styled trim pieces, including the faux aluminum bits in our tester, add to an updated look. Across the doors, you'll find all of your power accessories, including your windows, locks, and mirrors. There's also some storage in the bottom panel. In addition to the smoother ride, which partially owes its thanks to liquid-filled engine mounts, the interior is also far quieter now thanks to an acoustic windshield, thicker panels and key locations, and expanded use of insulation and damping materials throughout. The driver's seat is fully powered with power lumbar, while the passenger seat is manual. They're also extremely comfortable with good lower back support and nice amount of lateral support, all wrapped in super soft, high-quality cloth upholstery with three-stage heated seats like I talked about earlier in this trim level. Stepping up to the Limited adds premium leather upholstery with perforations across the middle in addition to memory settings for the driver's seat. Continuing down below there, you have the Subaru logo on the door entry threshold and rugged carpeted mats with the Outback logo. You have a manual tilting telescoping steering wheel and to the left-hand side of the dash, you have your traction control, rear power liftgate with memory feature in addition to other driver assistance features such as blind spot monitoring, lane departure warning, and forward collision alert. Adding to all of the safety features for 2015 are front seat cushion airbags that deploy from the seat bottom to help keep occupants in place in the event of a frontal collision. A power moonroof is available. So let's go ahead and see as she sounds. Let's go and shut her up. Stepping up to the 2.5 Premium gets you an upgraded 6 speaker audio system. It sounds pretty good overall. Routed through a new 7 inch LCD capacitive touch infotainment system. It looks and feels similar to some applications of the Toyota Intune system, combining some smartphone technology and integration, Sirius XM satellite radio, hands free Bluetooth telephone, and more.
The A pillars are wrapped in cloth, pretty nice touch, and small quarter windows right there for better visibility. Grip handles up top, and padded visors. The visors incorporate illuminated vanity mirrors. A manually dimming rear view mirror in this trim level. And in the top stack, you have your hands-free Bluetooth microphone and two of your reading lamps, not to mention a sunglass container. So the Starlink infotainment system is all new for the 2015 Outback and is a pretty big departure for Subaru as far as multimedia and technology. This is very, very similar to the Toyota Intune system as far as the menus, graphics. It's a little bit different, but the functionality is almost identical for those who are familiar with that system. It works via capacitive touch, so it's kind of like the Cadillac Q system. It's a high gloss sheen. You don't have to press it or anything like that. You just simply tap it. It's also pretty responsive. For the most part, it's all touchscreen except for the eject button right there for your in-dash CD player and the two outer buttons. You have home, phone, apps, info, rewind, fast forward, seek, change track, all that kind of stuff. So your home button right there brings you to this screen which essentially shows you all the main system functions. While our particular tester is not equipped with navigation, it is available, especially on upper trim levels. I don't know if it's a part of an option package for this particular premium trim, but you might want to double check on that. So if we go up to audio, I currently have my iPhone playing right now. There's album artwork, song artist information. You can change the source up top from Sirius XM satellite radio, FM, AM, disc, internet radio, Bluetooth streaming. And you can also reorder, so if you want to put priority of this up there and, and so on and so forth. Shelf or repeat, pause, your sound adjustments, preset equalizer parameters, and adjust. Where you can go between your lows and your highs and get a little bit more detailed as far as the customization is concerned. I wish it did have some just like bass, mid, treble. It's a little bit easier to understand, um, but once you play with it, you'll, you'll get it figured out. List allows you to search the device. Your hands-free telephone. If you click on information, you have things common to Sirius XM equipped vehicles nowadays as sports, real-time weather updates, extended forecasts, stocks, fuel prices, vehicle monitor, you have accelerator position, engine oil temperature and vehicle mode off to the far right so if you put it in X mode for example pretty nifty there's an eco monitor so you can track how economical you're driving and all of your maintenance info that you can input you can load up photos via USB and also reorder those icons system settings is in the bottom right so you can customize all the various aspects but that's just a quick overview of the Starlink system in the 2015 Subaru Outback. Continuing down the center stack, there's a dual zone electronic automatic climate control system with three stage heated seats for both the driver and passenger. Temperature, either side, one touch automatic, max AC, change in the different zones, and fan speed. You have front and rear defrost for cycling and other typical AC controls. And the little digital display, it houses your temperature, outside temperature, there's your fan speed, zone, and AC mode. In the bottom, there's a little storage cubby that houses a 12 volt power outlet, auxiliary input, and two USB ports. The center stack is finished in a brushed texture, almost like um, dark tinted brushed aluminum. Small bit of storage, two cup holders, and a large center console. It's also padded. There's a removable tray with change storage and a pretty decent amount of space. As far as the steering wheel, on the right hand side you have your cruise control. This particular vehicle is equipped with the um, EyeSight driver information system which includes adaptive cruise. Your wipers, front and rear, to the right hand side stock. Left hand side of the wheel you have your driver information controls down below there, radio, source, hands free telephone and voice commands. What would you like to do? All of your lighting and turn signals is to the left. The driver information is in the top of the LCD screen up there. Use the arrows to go up and down between trip and fuel information, a digital speed readout. And then you can pull up the main menu where you can adjust screen settings, the eyesight system. All righty. Let's go shut her down. And we'll check out the back seat.
Alrighty, so one of the first things that really surprised me about this vehicle, like we talked about in the front, was how much interior room there is in here. I mean, for a full-size adult, even people over six feet, you're going to be more than comfortable, especially in the back seat. With a comfortable seating position for myself up front, I'm five foot ten. I easily have four and a half, five inches of leg space, and probably about that, maybe even closer to the five inch mark of head space. So. There's plenty of room to kind of stretch out, move around. There's a lot of glass. There's excellent visibility everywhere you look. Um, and it's also very comfortable. I mean, just like the front, in this particular trim level, we had this premium cloth upholstery. I really don't see this being a vehicle that you would necessarily need to upgrade to leather or anything like that. I mean, it feels so nice. And it's, like I said, it's very comfortable. Um, of course, to each his own, and it's available if you prefer it. But you also have the cloth upholstery across the door panel right here. There is a padded armrest that you can fold down. Very broad, has a nice padding to it. Two cup holders. I'll talk about this more when we get to the trunk portion, but you can fold these seats flat in a 60-40 split type fashion so you can load cargo all the way to the front seats. But in addition to that, you have two handles back there to make it easy to fold it down, and you have two handles here that you can use on the outer bolsters. But these actually double as um, reclining levers as well so there's four positions you can raise it to its straightest portion right here if you prefer to be um, more upright and then back once to more neutral positions and then all the way back so you can kick back and relax on a longer trip it's very nice especially with as much padding <laughs> as there are in these seats there's not a whole lot back here in terms of amenities. All of the glass from the B-pillars rearward is tinted from the factory. There's illumination up top, grip handles, coat hooks, small bit of storage here. There's no air vents, so you'll have to rely on the, um, the front vents to circulate back here, which shouldn't be a big deal at all. And a little bit of storage across the doors with water bottle holders. You can sit three people back here. There's an adjustable third headrest, which is nice. You can lower it and raise it for better visibility. Um, Drivetrain hump is little high but not too high I don't think it'll cause any hindrance as far as leg space because the seat is pretty wide so I can imagine you would be able to sit three people my size back here just fine but yeah that's pretty much it good build quality a lot of soft touch materials very comfortable and very roomy not too bad so let's go and check out the rest of the vehicle Outback our tester features a power operated lift gate with programmable height memory being more of a traditional wagon than a crossover, the Outback boasts a lot of usable storage space. A removable privacy cover can be used for added security or taken out if you need to haul larger items. With the rear seats folded up, there's 35.5 cubic feet. Fold down the 60-40 split seats via two convenient trunk mounted handles and it more than doubles to 73.3 cubic feet of usable space. Underneath the trunk floor, you have your jack and equipment and your temporary spare tire. There's a 12 volt power outlet located out back in addition to cargo tie downs. The passenger seat features manual adjustments for both the recline and sliding portions. Like I said earlier, the entire top of the dash is padded, all this black portion up here, and you also have the faux aluminum detailing across the passenger portion. Down below you have a locking glove box, has a pretty decent amount of space, it's lined in felt. It doesn't have any illumination though, which would be a particularly handy feature at night. The Subaru Outback offers a lot of quality for the price. Its nicely appointed interior is perfect for families and hauling a lot of cargo, while its frugal power plants save on fuel and provide decent performance. It's an all-around great choice if you're looking for a comfy vehicle that prioritizes practicality. 
Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed the in-depth look at the 2015 Subaru Outback. Be sure to stay tuned next time, there's a lot more where that came from. Take care everybody.